All right, let's roll on to bag in in. It's going to be the rear suspension build. Seems how we've already got these here put together. Go ahead and get this done. We're going to skip the CVA build because we've already done it. We're going to move on to the, the hubs here. Uh, drop your bearings in. Real simple stuff. Nothing to it. Those fit real nice. And yeah, we have to drop our crush tubes in there. Get those in there nice and flat. Drop our oversized bearings in. And those ones are fitting real snug. Like that. Oh, that one almost feels like it's too snug. There we go. We're good. Get your right and left. Gonna have that. Find some blue Loctite here. Just put a little drop of that out here, out of the way. We need some of that. Pretty simple stuff. Now these are the optional hubs. You've got an A hub. That's the box stock setup. When you build the kit, it's going to tell you to use this A hub, and that's fine. A hub's good, but I like the B hub on my kit. I like the feel of the just slightly. It's about a half a hole longer than the stock setting. And uh, that'd be this second hole right here. And I just I just like the feel of the car. It's a little it makes the suspension roll just a little bit slower. And uh, it's kind of my speed. Now the way these go on is uh, they actually will go the direction you can see there, it just kind of chases the direction of the, the aluminum hub. Nothing, nothing to it. Put a little bit of Loctite on here. And get this started. Don't want to use a whole lot of Loctite on there. You may want to swap them hubs around. This is just to Put a little bit of Loctite in there, just enough to keep it snug. Don't want to put so much on there, you gotta break a wrench trying to get it out. Do that. Slap this together real quick. Nothing to it. Just do it. Nothing to it here. Oop, I'm getting clumsy here. I don't know why I'm getting in a hurry. I got the rest of the week to work on this thing, but I want to get started on my electronics. Get it ready to go. Might get up there for practice Tuesday night if we can get this thing done in time. And there's that. You got your right and your left. And uh, now we get to put the CVAs on there, the rear axles. You're going to take three shims. And we're not going to gauge these. We're just going to hope that the uh, they're all pretty much the same. It'd probably be a good idea to uh, and this goes, this is going to go in the back side out to the front. So you got 
three washers on the inside. You'll put one washer on the outside. It probably wouldn't hurt to uh, calibrate these, take a mic to them and just see what size they are. See if you got all the same thickness. I've never checked them, but my guess is they're probably the same. Then you're just going to take your roll pin in there. A little pressure. These fit pretty tight. And these here, I'll tell you, there's a lot of uses for these kind of roll pins. Take your uh, 12 millimeter hex adapter here, and we're just going to make sure that the Protruding flange dead is facing the uh, hub. The way I like to do mine is I like to pinch it real tight like the wheel is hooked up to it. I put a little bit of CA on there. Not much with this. You can actually overdo it with this. Then I just get it started. Now I want to pinch this down. I want this thing pinched as tight as I can get it by hand. And then I just center down. Let's see if it's got any play there. Got a little play. You got the crush tube inside there. It should hold up just fine. It feels like it's a little too tight, which this one feels like it could be just a smidgen too tight. You can take and loosen it up and then just reset it. If you get these too tight, if you get it pinched together too tight, what's going to happen is you're going to wear out one of your bearings there. That's pretty good right there. It's not over tight. It's tight, but not over tight. Wonder how my booty's gonna hold up against that hub. Hopefully, it'll be just fine. So there's one. That's the left one. Let's do the right one now. Get the washers on there. I'll put three on the inside again. Slide it through the back side. Nothing to it. And we're going to put the one on the front again. Oh. Hate it when that happens. Get a little clumsy there. Put it on the front. Get a roll pin out. Pop it in there like so. You're going to try to get it in there evenly. Both sides. Like so. And then we're going to get our hex. 12 millimeter hex. We're going to put it on there just like that. And this thing bottoms out in there just about perfect on there. So you almost can't pinch it too tight. But... You want it to have a little bit of relief there. You don't want it crazy tight, pinched down. So we're just going to pinch that in. Get that started with a little bit of Loctite on it. And cinch her down. You want to kind of get her tight. If you don't, it'll work loose. Just don't strip it. There you have it. The hubs are assembled. Now, we just got to figure out where we want the, the ball studs. And I like the, this is the B hub. And this is my right. Is if we're if we're facing the back of the car looking to the front this is the right so I'm going to want it to the inner hole 
the second hole over. So this is the side that faces this part right here is the part that faces the car. So if you're running the A hub in the box stock build, you'd be to the inside or the on the dog bone side, the axle side. So let's put that in there like so. Snug her up. And it's going into plastic, so you don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to strip it. There'll be a lot of pressure on that. This one here, I want the second hole over from the inside of the kit. So we'll just go like that. Get her started. Nothing to it. And you just take these and stock them in your pit bag or your pit box. And if you ever want to go to a shorter camber link, you've got those there ready to go. Or you can choose to use this inner hole here, which is actually just a half a hole shorter than the box stock. This hole is a half a hole longer and that one's a half a hole shorter. In case you ever need to know. And I will be right back and we'll get these mounted. And I'll be right back. Alright. Let's mount these hubs. Probably going to need our axle again here. Because we're going to want to uh, uh, put some shims in here. Now, I'm running the short wheelbase right now. So... I'm going to want my shims all the way to the back so I can move my hub forward. I'm going to run my hub all the way forward. This is the left side, so I'm going to need the left hub. I'm going to run the blue washer to the outside, the silver washer to the inside, just so it'll look kind of cool. Look kind of cool there. That silver separating the blue from the other blue. Look kind of cool. Then we're just going to take the hinge pin, get it started in there. Hopefully, this is going to go smooth as silk. Kind of see where it's going there. Oh, I had it. Look at there. That went too easy. You know what that means? The other side's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be an all-day project getting it on. And we just put the set screw over our hinge pin so it don't come out. Little captured hinge pins are really nice. Now seems how we're not going to be pulling any of this out. And to follow my front uh, links, turnbuckles, I'm going to want this notch to the outside. So this is the one that goes over here. Drop this one up here. So. That rear suspension is done. Moving pretty free. Even looks like the camber's gonna be real close with those measurements, so I, I got that close anyway. <coughs> it's always nice to have some camber links in your pit box ready to go so you can kind of get a close measurement. We're just gonna do the same thing over here. Put this blue one on first. Here, silver one on. Oh, my fingers are almost too fat for this kind of stuff. There we go. This will be the right side, so got the right hub. And make sure you get the right hubs on there, because if you don't, <laughs> that'd be a bummer. You have to go through all that again.
This one ain't being very friendly about going on. We knew that was going to happen. Start it like that. It makes putting them washers on a heck of a lot easier. I'm just going to slide her in. That one went in too easy too. Let's put the old set screw on there. And we're already at almost 16 minutes, so we're flying right through the rear. Seems how we've got the CBAs already built. Now this one, I'm going to want the notches facing the kit to keep it going the same as the rest of the kit. That way when I go to tighten my hubs, they'll all be pulling downward from the rear of the car. If I'm facing the rear of the car, setting them, they're going to be pulled downward. Clipped on, everything's working good. That's page 15 complete. Moving pretty free. Got a little bit of play there. We could shim that. I think I'm gonna let it break in a little bit first. We could always put like a point one shim in there. Get rid of some of the play in there, make it a little more precision that way. But uh, even that could be a little bit tighter. Well, I'm going to go ahead and roll with it, and I'll catch up with you guys later.